Customer service people of Reddit, what's the dumbest thing a customer has gone out of their way to complain about? I actually have an email saved, and I read it from time to time, because it makes me laugh. Point this person worked for a company that travels around the country slash world to trade conventions to sell their products. The person sent their product slash displays to our local convention center, but didn't make sure the label was correctly placed on the box, and it fell off. I ended up getting a call about it, and happened to find it in our warehouse, so I went out of my way to try and fix it, because I know how time sensitive slash urgent these things are, and maybe they are not in the country slash city anymore, so I took the call. The lady was frantic, I mean granted I get it, but didn't want to talk over the phone, because she was too busy, and wanted me to email her. She tells me she's leaving our city, and landing in another city tomorrow and to have her stuff forwarded there. I do this, then she re-ems me out on the email, because she was just temporarily staying there, and going to another city 500 km north of that city and now wants her stuff sent there. So I have to contact that station, and have them fix it, and send it there, it gets there and guess what, she's now moved on to another city 2000 km on the other coast. She proceeds to email me 5 times over that night, when I told her my work hours, and when I'm at my desk. She then complains in the last email that I'm ignoring her. 3 a.m. my time. I was very clear in what I was doing the whole time, yet she threw me under the bus in the email chain and included everyone in her company. However in these emails it's obvious I was asking these questions and trying to help point I then finally get her stuff fixed again and it ended up getting delivered but she then tried to get my in trouble with my higher ups and wanted my manager to follow up because I was so unprofessional. The best part was it ended with a senior executive responding basically giving me praise for trying to help her even if she didn't think so. She still works for that company somehow lol. Oh I love telling this story, I worked at a GM dealer in early 2000s. We had this guy, sweater guy was his nickname as he always wore them, regardless of season, come and occasionally who would never want to give you his VI in ash for fear that we'd steal his identity via his car. Yes, you read that correctly point now, his final trip to our shop was a doozy, as usual. He won't give us info on his vehicle, but expects us to get the right parts the first time despite knowing there are variations of his vehicle, Pontiac Bonville, and by providing us the info it helps him get exactly what he wants. So we finally get him to cooperate after 5 to 10 minutes of back and forth, hand him his parts and he just stands there, staring at us. Parts manager, is something wrong sir? SG, I want the freshest parts on the shelf. These are dusty, and have obviously been here forever. PM, well, there's no expiration date on these, as they don't expire. It's kinda dusty back here, which is why there's dust on the boxes. SG, angrily, I don't care, I want fresh product, or I'm going to the business manager. PM, I'll call him back right now, and he can explain this to you, since you choose to be rude to us. General manager comes back already having been aware this guy is here, again, and tries to rationalize with him, and gets the exact same treatment we did in the shop. He leaves for a couple minutes, comes back with a piece of paper in his hand, and says to SG please read and sign this. It states that you are no longer allowed on the premises seeing as you continue to harass my employees each visit. If you return, we will call the police, and have you escorted off the property. Understood, and with that, sweater guy scribbled his name, and grumbled his way out the door. There was this one time where this woman complained to my manager, that I gave her an attitude, when I was talking to her. She didn't give any context, and just said I was rude, when I was talking to her. Let me give you the whole story, since the pandemic, I have been assigned on a position, where I count people into the store. As I was counting people in, I noticed in the front entrance, where we have two chairs there was this one woman sitting on the chair with her mask fully down. Keep in mind this is right in the walkway, where she is essentially breathing on everyone who's leaving the store. 
I had very politely and kindly asked her to please lift her mask up as it was completely below her chin and not covering anything at all point she had then refused and I had again informed her of the dangers and reminded her of us being in a pandemic point the stupidity of this is not only are you not wearing a mask when it's mandated. We are approaching on the one year mark of the pandemic and at this point you don't understand the regulation of wearing a mask. This is utter stupidity at its highest point. Even if I did give you attitude, why shouldn't I? You're two feet away from the door, where you can simply stand outside where it's warm and instead you choose to sit down right in front of the walkway with your mask down and get confused when I ask you to put your mask up. I hate people. I'm not a CS person, but I was at a little hole in the wall family owned drive-in fast food place. This location is known locally by everyone in the small town. And this particular small town had a reputation for being a lot of rough and tough farmers, hunters, and welders and even smiths and miners. No joke. They did a lot of hard artisan work here. They were also very sarcastic people by nature. Friendly at first. But touch the wrong buttons and you will be in a world of hurt. Nothing phases these people. Well, they get a lot of travelers heading to some resorts some miles off. This lily pad town is in the middle of nowhere between other small towns and villages I frequent the family business regularly and they locally sourced all their produce for their food. So it's good sheet. Well, that also means their prices are a bit higher. Think Culver's but better quality. If you have ever paid their unfortunate prices for food point some traveling lady made a huge mistake. Her nice, newest model at the time, Lincoln Navigator was parked in their little parking lot was still running. I parked my less fancy Malibu next to her. I could hear her from the outside of the cheap storm door that hardly latches in the summertime as soon as I stepped out of my car. It was noon. The kids were out from the creek and the faint aroma of fish and chips with fried pickles was about the air like a midwestern perfume. This beach. Her banshee screaming would stop occasionally as the employee, the rough daughter of the business owner and her husband. These women were Scandinavian as fuck. If you know what that means then good for you. If you don't then it means they are not to be faked with. Apparently the excitement had just happened. Keep in mind they have cute little paper menus available with prices on them. Karen can't do math either. She's freaking out that her food has come to the whopping price of $10.65 faking cents. She hasn't even paid yet of course point Lyra, our employee, dead inside since the day she crawled from her mother's unholy womb, is staring this woman down. The price, she says, and I swear I can hear her jaw cracking with how gritted her teeth are, are the prices. Now pay up, or I'm eating your food for my lunch. I demand to see the manager. Of course you do, Karen. Of course you do. But you're not from around here are you? Or oh, poor sod, look. Lyra finally has raised her voice, look you faking glorified nipple clamp. This isn't a goddamn charity service. It's a restaurant. Now pay up, or drive 150 miles back, and go to the faking soup kitchen in the city, if you're so goddamn desperate for a handout, to go with your bullshit marriage. Money. Now. Or leave. I have paying customers, that will pay up and not whine like a little beach, that I would much rather deal with right now. She. Walked out. I praised Lyra. I got my lunch for free. Not a huge fan of potato poppers though. But like she said, I don't complain in a Scandinavian woman's house let alone her restaurant. I work in a pharmacy. Just a couple days ago I rang through a guy with a very small order of groceries. Bread, eggs, etc. His total came to just over $10, and when I asked him how he was paying he gave me a $20 store coupon. Noticing he was a little short, I politely told him we weren't able to use it on an order that was less than $20, it's not an interchangeable amount and I can't substitute the remainder of the coupon out in cash, but informed him that I could suspend the order if he wanted to get a couple more things so I could take the 20 off. He got visibly and loudly irate with me, repeatedly telling me to just do it, turning to the other customers in line and calling me stupid, saying he couldn't believe what he was hearing. Even told me to keep it and roughly snatched it away again when I tried to explain that he could keep it for next time. If he doesn't want to go back now, he just needs his subtitle to be at $20 like. Dude. I'm trying to tell you you can get more stuff and pay less if you just get a few more items. 
I'm helping you, saving you faking money and you're yelling at me for it? Why? Also once had a lady yell at me because she somehow couldn't wrap her head around the fact that an item was on sale the previous day, but the sale had ended when she tried to buy it again the next night. Like, lady, it wouldn't be a sale if it was that price 24 over 7. That doesn't even make sense. I don't get it. This is faking ridiculous. I'm never shopping here again. Awesome. Don't let the door hit you on the way out. I worked at a bank a few years back as a call taker. I had someone come through and had obviously entered in the wrong identification number that the bank uses to make it easier to bring up a person's information point this is fine. I deal with this one tenth times. So I asked the lady if she could please provide her name or identification number. She immediately goes off tap and says you should have all my information in front of you. I just replied politely, ma'am there seems to have been an error so, if I could get some information I'd be happy get you through this as quickly as I can. So she yells some 8 digit number at me, which I confirm with her, and try and pull up a profile. There was nothing attached to the number, so I once again confirm the number with her. Yep that the number, what are you daft or something, ma'am. I'm just trying to bring up the profile, so that I can assist with any issue that you are having. I'll try with your name. Could you please just provide your first and last name? Let's just say her name was Alina Smith. Real last name was uncommon. Don't remember first name. I search the name and nothing comes up. Naturally I say, is Smith your maiden name Alina? I have never been married in my life she replies okay. You mentioned that there is an issue with your card not working before. Can I get the card number and we will bring up your profile using that she stopped. Why do you want my card number? Are you trying to scam me? Ma'am you called the bank. If the profile got brought up I have access to all this information anyway. And there are strict parameters in place to make sure that your card information is as secure as possible. So that even if I did have the card number, no one in this bank could do anything with that information I always said this to put people at ease with giving me information they were a little uneasy about giving me. She says fine and provides me the number. I confirm it with here again as I type it in but still nothing comes up point I ask her what may seem like a stupid question ma'am. What colors the card? Blue and pink she replies. Okay the symbol in the top left hand corner is a purple shield correct? Yes. Of course. That's your company's symbol you idiot no ma'am I'm sorry you have called the wrong bank. If you call this number, providing her the correct bank's number just to be helpful, they will be able to assist you. No no no, this is the bank, this is my bank. She replies quite angrily I'm sorry Elisa, but the bank card you just described doesn't correspond with this bank. We have never offered a blue and pink card and our symbol is not a purple shield I'm still being polite and just trying. Inform her that she need to call the other bank my manager listens in at this point because has interested into why I gave another bank's number. She goes off first of all don't be facetious. Second of all my name is Alina. You're such an idiot. Do you even know what facetious means? I just reply essentially, sarcastic. Now Elisa, this time on purpose, on the back of the card there will be a number to call it Alina you little sheet and yes. Spist. I already have manager approval to drop this lady into the hell. That is the other bank's cue. Well Elisa, if you call that number you will be in touch with the correct people. My name should be right in front of you stop getting it wrong. I would like to speak with your manager usually this bank has the policy that as soon as you ask for the manager, we need to escalate, get in touch with the manager, and while the manager responds, try and calm them down. My manager mutes my mic. Says the best words that could ever be said she's not a customer, she doesn't have any valid claim to speak to a manager and frankly I don't want to speak to her, you have plenty of grounds to hang up on her as she's being abusive so I say, have some fun with her, and hang up, so I say the following I'm so sorry Elisa, that I keep on getting wrong, but the fact that your information isn't on my screen means you got something wrong. Now seeming as I can't identify you, I'm not actually allowed to put you through to a manager, lies, all lies. Now Elisa if you call the correct bank, maybe they could assist you with this problem. Now is there anything else that I can help you with today, Catherine, I mean Karen. Oops sorry Elisa, she hung up tldr lady calls wrong bank. 
calls me a facetious idiot, asks to complain about me getting her name wrong as she is not a customer, and gets dealt with accordingly yes, I was an asshole to her, but she was an as first, when I was just directing her to the correct location. At one point, I worked for a pest control company. One of the things we offered was termite protection. We used centric and stations, which are about 7 inches long, and buried in the ground. Since we needed to bury stuff, we would contact 8 double one to have utility lines marked 811 is not affiliated with our pest control company in any shape or form point typically, 811 would mark the lines within a few days and we'd come out with an electric auger to place the stations. Now, sometimes 811 would be backed up or there would be concerns of unmarked lines, so we also had a manual auger, so the options ended up being, have 811 mark the lines and use the electric auger, or not have lines marked, and use the hand auger. This was both for our technician's safety and to make sure we didn't fuck up an utility line, i.e. water or buried power. 811 can take several days to mark a line. However, we do not process any payment until the work is done and the centricons are installed. Get a call from a dude, he signed the contract for centricon stations two days previously, and wanted to know when we would do it. I explained we were for 811 to mark lines guy immediately and utterly loses his sheet. Yells about how he paid a lot of money for this, and we couldn't just take his money and not do the work. I attempt to explain we have not ran his card and we will not until the work is done. Proceeds to yell at me for several more minutes that he wants the stations placed today. Eventually, get him placed on hold and call over to the service center manager. He says we can come out today with a hand auger if the customer is so insistent. Okay, cool. Get back to customer and tell him we can come out and do a hand auger today since 811 zeta was 3 to 5 days. Nope. He starts yelling even louder that we will not be doing anything to his property until lines are marked. Point so, you want us out today, but don't want us out until lines are marked. Yells at me and calls me an idiot. We continue this circle logic for several minutes while I try to get him to acknowledge he's asking for things in a way I can't provide and explaining 12 plus times that I cannot control 811. Point finally, I give up and send him to my manager. Who then gets screamed at for 30 minutes about the exact same sheet point we ended up cancelling his contract and marking his account as do not sale due to harassment. This is actually recent with our mask mandate. I sell appliances and this mother had come in with her kitchen package in mind. She was buying over 8k worth of equipment. She wasn't the problem, but the process was timely, probably 15 minutes of paperwork. The problem was the entitled couple waiting on me to finish up with her. As mom and I were biting through papa work I of course was chatting with her to help build that relationship, asking about kids, her life, etc. Well, the entitled couple, wife specifically, was absolutely livid that I would waste their time by talking to this lady about her life. She didn't realize that we were actually accomplishing things while we chat. After the transaction is finished, I look to the couple and tell both the husband and wife to please put their mask over their noses and cover their faces properly. Oh man. The devil came out. Not only was she pissed about being told what to do, but I had made her wait for no reason. How dare you. How dare you tell me what to do. Before I could even respond to this crazy lady she found my manager and proceeded to complain. My boss later approached me laughing his ass off. My boss, so let me get this straight. You mean that you're upset that she gave a customer excellent service and politely reminded you to follow our mask policy here at insert employer? Yes. She wasted our time with meaningless conversation and told me what to do. We spent so much money here. My manager laughed at her and you can imagine that pissed her off. My manager just walked up to me and said, you're doing a great job. TLDR, the owner of Sambuca 360 in Dallas, Texas is a huge faking beach point I was a valet during college. This was maybe our 2007 to 2009 time frame and was working a restaurant for lunch. A person's car breaks down, or for a flat tire, I forget which, security came to help them and said pull over here which was Sambuca 360. The restaurant was still in the process of construction and had a little semicircle in front to pull up in. 
Cunty McCuntison pulls up and asks me why there's a car in her spot. I said, well that car is messed up and security is helping them. He's getting someone to bring the emergency charger or whatever and he'll move. I'm guessing the giant sub with security on the side with flashing lights with a broken down car wasn't clear enough point cunty. Can I park here? Me, you want to park here in front of the valet drive of this restaurant? No, I'm still working and I have customers inside so you can't block someone else's drive. So you can park here point she pulls around to the back area where they're supposed to be anyway which is literally not even 50 feet away. While I was pulling a car she grabbed the cones that were inside of my valet stand to block off a spot for herself. I said, nah, you don't get to touch my stuff, and moved it back cunty said, fine, be that way. Ms. McCunterson proceeded to call my manager to tell them I parked a car in front of her restaurant, I took her things, was rude, and a bunch of other stuff. I told my boss what happened and told them to ask the manager of the restaurant who saw all of this while I was working or the security guard on duty if they needed to. I never heard anything else and from what I was told from my ex coworkers, she's still a beach to this day. All of this just to avoid parking 50 feet away. Work at Home Depot in order fulfillment. Just recently, Boppis order comes in for Halloween product. I know offhand that we had recently shipped all the remaining Halloween product to another store in the area that was apparently going gangbusters in seasonal, but for the sake of due diligence, I check anyway. Our entire Halloween section had been completely purged to make way for Christmas already, and I verified with the supervisor for that product that yes, the product was gone. We are just waiting on the other store to finalize the paperwork to shift the inventory system side. So I call the customer and explain his product is out of stock, both at my store and all the other immediately nearby stores, but if he was willing to make the drive then the store about 40ish minutes up the freeway has all the Halloween stuff. He said he understood, thanked me for my time, and asked to be refunded then. Cool, easy, no problem point about 20 minutes later, I see his name pop into my orders again. Same product. Don't even bother looking, just call him directly. Explain again that he ordered from the same store, we still don't have it, our counts are off, because of pending paperwork, and apologize for the inconvenience. Again, he seems to understand, and I make sure to mention to change the store selected on his side, if he's trying to pick it up from the other store. Okay great, on with my day 30 minutes go by, guess who? I call him up, introduce myself again, and he interrupts. What is it going to take for you to have this at your store? Your website says you have it. Why are you lying to me? Do I need to call corporate to actually get some customer service here? Like, 0 to 100. I try to, but in and be polite, and explain for a third time, but he's not having it. Just yelling over everything. On the side I cancel his order, and refund him, while he's going on. And under his screaming, explain that my store isn't doing personal transfers, to limit possible cross store contamination during covid, and even if it hadn't I wouldn't be making a 30 plus mile drive, to pick up a $10 item. Thanked him and hung up point don't know, if he did call corporate, but definitely noticed his survey response as well as his yelp review. Like, bruh, are you that sore over not getting your little decoration? Have all the time in the world to blast your slash valued slash opinion of our service, but not 60 seconds to listen to me and understand it's not available? As much as I could go into into the many arguments with customers in the auto part industry, I can think of three things trying to explain to people why we don't list X slash Y parts for their vehicle for various reasons, and also the whole, well I can buy it online for X slash Y price and my personal favorite too, a scammer who was trying to use the classic my parents slash grandparents slash friend slash whoever. Bought a jack and I'd like to return slash warranty it scam. Manager took the phone call and went through the whole spiel while arguing with this woman that we could not do a return because I didn't have a receipt. Gee, wonder why we don't store customer information and thus no record of a purchase. Again, no receipt. We cannot do transactions over the phone unless you have an account point. We cannot do a return slash warranty for a part that isn't physically here point lady. Eventually got frustrated and told my manager, well that's not good customer service. 
His response? No, it isn't. That's company policy. She hung up point, and also this one, that just takes the cake 3, similar to the above story, where a customer kept arguing about getting his money for a warranty, for a part he refused to give us to warranty out. Long story short, he needed CV axles for his car which we did not list anymore, because they were no longer being manufactured. We ended up ordering them for him from somewhere else as a remon, meaning they both had core deposits on them. Things happened and, while he did bring back one of the cores for the axles, he said the other one needed to be warrantied out for whatever reason, that I don't remember. We tell him, okay, well bring us the axle, and we'll warranty it out for you, and give you your money back. He refused. His logic is, was along the lines of I already gave you one of them, why would I give you the other? Can't you just give me my money back for it? We spent weeks, yes weeks. He kept leaving and coming back arguing over this, explaining to him plain and simple, we cannot give you your money back for a warranty for a part we do not have, because you refuse to give it to us. I used to work in the paint department at Home Depot, and once a guy came, in trying to get me to do a color match on a piece of half painted concrete about the size of a pea. Now, technically you need a sample the size of a dime, and preferably flat or flattish, for a paint match. I tried to explain this to him, but he was not having it at all point I was really good at color matching, though, one of the best in our district, so I figured I may as well just try and do a manual match, visually finding the closest color card, then tweaking from there. I explained to the guy that it likely wouldn't be perfect, so it would be best he get a sample of the paint to go check against his actual project. Nope. He wanted 15 gallons of it in our most expensive paint told him that was a bad idea and he wouldn't be able to return it. Plus, due to the color, a reddish one, we would not have room to retweak the paint if it didn't work because of how much color and red paint takes to make in the first place. Still demanded his 15 gallons. I said whatever, on your head be it point then he took the concrete sample back, faking licked it, and said oh, and my boss likes the color better wet. So I'm internally screaming, and tell him to just drop it on the counter, and if he has any other shopping to do he's welcome to go, do it because this is gonna take a while. He wanders off, and I get to work point long story short, I got the match amazingly close. To the point even my boss was impressed. The guy deemed it okay, took his 15 gallons, and left point he came back the next day screaming that it didn't match, how I'd pissed off his boss by screwing up the paint, their client was mad at them, etc etc. My bosses took my side and told him to fuck off. He had to be escorted out point this one time during Black Friday, I was working on the register at Coles. I had a really long line of customers with baskets of stuff and this one lady just comes up and asks if she can cut the line because she only wanted to buy a gift card. I mean I can see why she'd ask to cut, but you know I just didn't think that'd be fair to anyone else in line. Like sure lots of people had filled cards, but there were also plenty with only a few items in their hands. I told the lady no, and how everyone has to wait in line. Anyway she got kind of pissed off and complained about how bullshit that was and walked off to the back of the line point, so I kept going, and a few customers I rang up along the way kept validating me, telling me I was in the right and how the gift card lady was in the wrong. That sort of thing. So about 15 minutes after the incident and out of the 12 cashiers we had she ended up at my register. She walked up to me, kinda threw the gift card at me, and said oh great, I'm stuck with you, feelings, mutual. I replied, excuse, me, what, ah, you faking kidding me? That is so rude, I, thought you were joking. I legit thought she was joking I honestly thought I got through to her earlier lol point, so she gets mad, and does the usual Karen routine about wanting to see the manager and yada yada. So anyways my manager comes and starts apologizing to her about my extremely abusive behavior. The lady gets mad and demands I apologize to her. So with literally half the store watching I just clean into her and say no, I'm not apologizing to you. I was pretty pissed off at this point and dropped the whole customer friendly act, so I said that with a sort of pizzazz, oh, go fuck yourself. She said and walked off angrily, thanks, you too. I said point, after she left my manager and a few customer kept apologizing to me, saying how I shouldn't have had to experience that and all that. 
Anyways what's funny is she never ended up buying the gift so so like. What da fuck, lady? I had a customer and his girlfriend a couple of months back place all the blame on my restaurant, me, and my crew for not having a dry outdoor seating area. In the middle of a rainstorm. Not like a freak rainstorm either. It had been raining all day. We weren't offering indoor seating at the time as the restrictions placed by the city I live in didn't allow it for our size. Yeah no, on account of this global pandemic. Just absolutely beside himself that him and his girlfriend didn't have a dry place to sit outside. Blaming us for the storm. Cursing at us. Scoffing at every attempt to defuse this useless argument. And it would be one thing if he didn't know that we weren't offering indoor seating, though most places weren't at the time so, infer, and it was a simple sorry for the inconvenience type deal. But he wanted to be seated outside. Just also didn't want to get wet in the process. The girlfriend you could tell was mortified, but said nothing in the way of apologizing or trying to calm him down at all. We offered to seat them outside, and we could wipe down a table and move a patio umbrella over the table. They agreed for all of maybe two minutes before returning to the host stand to kick and scream further about how absurd it was that their seats and table weren't dry, asking for other umbrellas. But the only ones we had were ones guarding tables where other guests found themselves content sitting in the rain. So they opted to place a two-go order and find another place where they could sit outside and not be soaking wet. So my crew and I got to watch as they placed their order, took it maybe 100 foot from the front door, and ate it soaking wet on the brick garden box that sits down the way on the walking mall we are attached to. We had chairs they cold sat in, and tables they cold eaten on under an umbrella. But they were too wet for his liking. I was a shift supervisor, and I had a lady who came into the store with a dog. It was a fashion accessory dog, with a diamond studded collar by the way, not a service dog, and I told her dogs weren't allowed in the store. She argues that they are, and that she's always allowed in with her dog and she's been coming to the store regularly, since before I was born. This was the first time I had seen her, and I had been working there full time for a year, and knew for a fact that the store was only around maybe 8 years, but I digress. I point to the sign saying no dogs unless service dogs, and she said it was a stupid policy. People have always made her an exception before and there was literally no reason why she shouldn't bring her dog with her meanwhile. I, with my severe dog allergies, which is depressing, because I love dogs, am already wheezing sniffling, and breaking out in hives as we have this conversation. I tell her that it's nothing personal, but it's for hygiene purposes and people can have dog allergies and I'm one of them, and I'm allergic to her dog. She tells me it's literally impossible to be allergic to dogs, unless you touch them, even though I'm clearly having an allergy attack. She's actually said literally by the way, she said she was going to call head office and get me fired. I told her, okay, go right ahead, and I wrote on a post-it note my name, my manager's name, my regional manager's name and work number and head office's number, and gave it to her, and wished her luck. She was so shocked and enraged she stormed out of the store, while I went to the back, and took some antihistamines. I wasn't worried about her threat, since I hated my job anyway, and my coworker was there to witness the interaction, and I told my manager when she came in what happened. No one heard from that lady as far as I know, and she never returned to the store, despite apparently being a regular customer. We had a regular customer who would walk down the tills and take note of anyone who didn't smile or say good morning Mrs. Smith not her actual name. Then she would go straight to the customer service desk and report all the colleagues who didn't smile or say good morning. I was always one, but the report always went straight in the bin. It's a busy Saturday morning, 40 tills and she would give 30 names. One day, I was on the bus with my girlfriend going to her village. There was a dirty old man on the bus who wouldn't leave a young girl alone. Both me and a girlfriend had a friendly few words. I'm Scottish and the words dirty old cunt was used a few times with him and I sat with him and my girlfriend sat with the young girl point when the young girl went to get off the bus, he wanted off the as well and I refused to let him pass and had a couple of other passengers and the bus driver supported me. We let him off a couple of stops later the next Saturday, I was on holiday and had a call from my manager. Mrs. Smith was singing my praises. 
She said I was the nicest young man she had ever met, and was I was so helpful. What did you do? You normally stick your tongue out, or pull the finger, when she walks past, and she always reports you. I didn't know this at the time, but she was on that bus, and she ended up sitting on the bus with me, when she can for years, in case that dirty old man gets on the bus again. He did a few times and she would say out loud what an awful man he was. And her weekly reports back to my manager, how nice I am. I believe she still does, and I left there 8 years ago. Okay so, I work at Ross, which can attract some pretty dumb and sketchy people honestly. I have lots of stories, but here's the one that came to mind point a woman bought a couple things, including a candle which was in a glass jar. As she was walking away from the register she put the candle on the child seat panel of her cart, right in front of one of the leg holes. So of course, the candle slid out as soon as she let go of it. It fell on the floor and shattered. She saw that I had seen it happen and told me she was going to go get another candle. I told her she would have to take her cart and everything with her because there were other people in the customer service line and we would need to do an entirely separate purchase for her anyway. She said no, she meant she was just going to grab another candle. As in, not pay for it. I tried explaining that, since she was the one who broke the first candle, that she'd have to pay for another if she wanted one. She got mad and asked to talk to my manager. She told my manager that it was our fault her candle broke because it fell out of the cart back quote randomly and back quote unprovoked. I told the manager what I'd seen actually happen. So she politely told the woman exactly what I had about having to pay for a second candle. The woman said she was going to file a complaint to who I have no idea about how our carts are back quote faulty and back quote will damage your items. My manager just said okay ma'am, which made her even more mad, and she stormed out. I helped out at a small local toy store during the Christmas rush, when I was about 13 to 14, because we knew the owners helped with the register and gift wrapping, so I got pretty good at wrapping various items. This one lady came in the day before Christmas Eve, and wanted a bobsled, like the one with steering wheel and foot brake. The owner told her we were all out as she was pretty late to do Christmas shopping. This was before internet shopping, and the closest toy store was over an hour away. Anyway the owner told her she could buy the window X without the original box, but fully assembled, and she happily agreed. The owner then got called away so told me to finish the business. Now this lady turned out to be what we in today's climate would call a Karen as she started to try and force me to give her a discount as it was without the original box and a window X. I told her that the bob's lead had been in the window for 10 days as I assembled it myself. When I wouldn't budge, I wasn't allowed to give discounts on the price she said she wanted me to gift wrap it. I said okay, let me find a large enough box to put it in, but she wanted it wrapped as is. I said that it ain't gonna be pretty, and started. She then said it was the worst she had seen, and I swear to all I hold dear that she forced me to redo the wrapping four times. The own finally came back and asked why I wasn't done, yet and I told her what was going on, and she said the wrapping looks ace. The Karen then said you could still see it was a bobsled. The owner then sent me on a break as I was about to start crying, so I don't know what happened next, but knowing the owner well I assume she made the Karen wish she was never born. Throughout school I worked as at a university competition pool, more lane swimming, less kids on floating toys, though there's a bit of that on weekends. We had one individual, we'll call Bill, who would typically make requests slash complaints, but would do them in an extraordinary manners, that it would be impossible to take them seriously point it was a fresh water pool that's chemically treated. The chemicals are too harsh for his skin, so he demanded we change over to a salt water pool in the next two weeks. Not thinking he was serious, as that sort of change would be monstrous and probably easier to just build a new pool, we didn't report the request to change to salt water. Two weeks later he enters the pool and says why, is this fresh water? This should be salt. It didn't matter that, even if we had the millions of dollars to replace the pipes, filtration system, and tiles it wouldn't happen in a two week time period. He lost it, left the pool, complained to the front desk, and advised I start looking for a new job, because management knew about my blunder of not reporting the initial complaint. 
Management told me they laughed at him when he left, but this was the start of a downward relationship. The pool would typically play the easy listening radio station sponsor. Some guard slash staff would put on other things on weekends, but it was never anything loud or obnoxious, and it was kept at a reasonable level. Regardless of the volume there was always a music is too loud. Turn off the noise pollution. Sure we'll turn it down, nope it had to be off. It would come to the point he'd watch for the office, to be empty and sneak in to turn it off himself. He wrote an essay of a complaint where he compared the sounds of local easy listening FM to WWIIPOW sound torture. I'll always remember when he called the Beatles heavy metal popular rock band. Once he showed up when synchronized swimming was training. They have their own boombox and underwater speaker. Bill screamed at the children training, their instructor, the guards, the front desk, and wrote several long winded complaints to all level of management and even to the dean of the university. He talked to me for longer than comfortable that those speakers should be considered illegal weapons and that synchronized swimming speakers are nothing short of war crimes. He drafted a lawsuit saying the pool psychologically damaged him. Point the lawsuit didn't amount to much. It's my understanding he didn't hire a lawyer and just did it himself and was thrown out before it made it to any judge. However after that management took him aside and basically said, if you're nice we'll help you, but you can't scream at patrons, especially kids they threatened to end his membership unless he smart end up, but soon enough he was back in force. I won't go into specific details of all the wacky things he did, but the highlights are, he pushed around kids, yelled at varsity swim team for swimming in his lane, and even faked a seizure in the water lifelong patrons hated him, management hated him, frontline staff hated him. He was a miserable man, but he was the one who couldn't handle it anymore. Before his membership was revoked he went to a different pool, because of our poor customer service. Whopper Wednesday some Burger Kings have a promotion called Whopper Wednesday in which you can get a Whopper for free. The app advertises this every week, but it's a Whopper for a dollar. Really good deal given that they're five dollar sandwiches. One. Wednesday I'm the front cashier and a customer comes in asking for the Whopper Wednesday. I tell him we don't do that promotion. He states that his app told him he could get a Whopper for a dollar. I ask him for the code. He demands that I just give him the deal and that he shouldn't need a code. Now, sometimes I have certain codes memorized. 8711 is 3 dollar nuggets and fries. 8610 is a $3 double cheeseburger meal. 9410 is a to bacon cheeseburger meal, etc. However, this promotion on the app was relatively new and only once a week. So none of us had the code memorized, and we had no way of accessing it in the system, unless we literally try all 4 digit combos, until we find it. I try to explain to the customer that I have no way of accessing the code on my end, I need it from the app point the customer angrily pulls out his phone, and for some reason the app just straight wasn't working. Just his luck. And, of course, just my luck too, because obviously it was my fault. He continues to argue with me for 10 minutes. My managers see it happening, and know that I'm pretty good at handling disputes on my own. So they only step in if the customer demands the manager. However, I've learned that if you handle the situation yourself, hold your ground, work with them to solve the conflict, and carry yourself a certain way, then the customers often won't ask. Finally the customer slams his phone down and recedes. Asking for those two Whopper meals I carry on, take his order. He seems clearly increasingly pissed with each question I ask him. I don't care, I just want to get him his order, get it right, and get him out. I then tell him his total. Almost $20. He flips his sheet again. I wanted the two for 10. Two small Whopper meals for $10. I take a deep breath before explaining to him that the two for 10 was a promotion which just ended a few weeks ago and is no longer in the system. I literally couldn't bring it up. He spends another 10 minutes screaming at me, literally the only time I have actually been full on cussed out in all of my time at back. He storms out, calling me every name in the book. Hit his head on the door on the way out point after that I downloaded the back app myself, so we could look up all of the coupon codes that we didn't have in the system, to avoid this whole encounter fact that guy. I used to work at a petrol station that also had a restaurant it was fried fish and chicken put out every couple of hours, we did burgers and sides and stuff too but I digress. 
I should also mention that you can see into the kitchen from the ordering area, not just a little window the whole kitchen is in full view, that's important later. I had a woman come in every Wednesday afternoon and ask for fresh fish, I didn't have a problem with that until one day she came in and I wasn't at the front because I had just finished frying the fish. As I'm plating up the fish she walks in, I smile and tell her that I've got fresh fish on the way. She snarls and says I don't want that it's been sitting out. I apologize for any misunderstanding and tell her it just came out of the fryer a moment ago and that even if I made a fresh batch for her it wouldn't be any fresher than that batch was at that very moment. She sneered at me and stomped off to my manager her heels click clacking across the store. Fortunately after I explained it to the manager she had my back. The woman looked like someone just sheet in her fresh fish basket. After a tense few seconds she says she needs to call him and see what he wants to do about it. She goes outside and makes a 10 minute phone call, comes back in and says it's been sitting in there now, so I want some fresh fish. At that point it was no longer fresh out of the oil and had been in the heat lamp for 10 minutes, so I had to make her fresh fish. I hated that woman. The most ludicrous complaints are always people who are upset their tech isn't white point cable slash internet customer requested a note on their work order that they were hard of hearing and would not hear the tech's arrival if they happened to be on the other side of the house when the tech arrived. Naturally, the customer made sure to be out of earshot when the tech arrived. Seeing the note, the tech hopped the fence so he could knock on the door. Customer called to complain that somebody should, could have shot the tech for going literally above and beyond to make sure they kept their appointment point not even a customer, some nosy neighbor calling to see whether or not they could call the police. Said they confronted the technician, who explained that he was there to hook up cable. Said the tech was wearing company clothing, driving a company vehicle, and gave her a company business card. The tech wisely hightailed it, so could not longer be shot. Demanded I see whether anyone in the area had a tech scheduled. Person was too lazy to even get the address of service. Did I mention the tech was setting up service at the tap? As in literally was not entering the home, was literally just huking up cable. Like, you're afraid someone is disguising themselves as Comcast to give out free cable. Similarly had an unsubscriber call concerned that a crew was sitting around waiting for equipment for a drop barry. Again. Had watched them set up the line and all, so wasn't, you know, confused about their purpose. Made multiple mentions of their ethnicity point a little more life that it. This call happened to someone on my team, who excitedly announced it to all of us in earshot after the call ended. They had to fill out a property damage complaint for a customer who said techs working inside their home had bumped a dresser, causing a jar of heirloom marbles behind it. So they got to fill out the complaint customer lost their marbles. So two weeks ago my co-worker was directing traffic at the grocery store and a lady drops her eggs and the lady looks at the guy who is directly traffic. She tells him so are you gonna clean this up he then told her that we have a cleaning service that cleans messes up. Then she proceeds to complain to the person at the till. When she paid for her groceries the lady walks up to the person directing traffic and tells him okay so, name. I'm gonna go complain that you didn't clean up the mess then he says go for it. So the lady walks out to the customer service desk and I see her writing a note on a pen and paper. Then I walk him to pay for my lunch and she then proceeded to tell me that she was in the right that he should have cleaned up the mess. Then I told her that we have cleaning service that cleans up messes that are made by mistake. They happen and that we should move on. But to this lady, she was determined to get us both fired now. One I can be fired because I'm in the union and they can't fire me over a little mess that I had nothing to do with until I walked in to pay for my lunch until she made that mess in the first place. Later that day I got called up to the manager's office. In my head I told myself what the fact did this person lie about the manager said so in this note that this lady sent to me. She claims that you were harassing her. Is that true? I told him that it was false and told him the whole story and asked if we could go look at the cameras with audio. So we did and he saw everything unfold. This made me a little happy inside that this person's complaint went nowhere point. That was one of my more recent complaint I have witnessed slash encountered. 
used to work at Coles and have several war stories because the service policy is to always side with the customer, no matter how ridiculous their demands. A dude once returned a pair of shoes that looked like they'd been used for a run on the beach every day for two straight years with the excuse that they hurt his son's foot and the management was totally cool with it. For example, the ones that always stand out the most for me are a woman that came up to the register, went oh shoot, I forgot I had a gift card at home. Oh well, it's only a few dollars. Goes through the whole transaction, then notices on her receipt that something rang up like 35 cents higher than it was supposed to. She made me call a manager up to void and redo the entire transaction over that. But not using the gift card, because it's just a few dollars isn't a big deal. A family that brought up a shirt without a tag, that also didn't have an easy reference number printed on the cloth tag, to look up the price, come to find it was literally the last of this shirt we had in the entire store, and it took forever, and like three different employees getting involved to look up the price. When we finally get it to ring up, it's something like $5 on clearance. They say can't it be cheaper, we've been waiting a while. Then there was the woman who tried to pay her store credit card bill with over $1,000 of gift cards. We had this fundraising gift card that could be applied to credit card balances, but the regular store gift cards couldn't. I'm not sure what the difference was, but I assume it was either the way the fundraising gift cards being sold ensuring that there was a real cash value behind them. Or it just being an incentive for whatever organization is selling them for their fundraiser. Anyway, as soon as I told her this, she went okay, you have to call a manager, because I have over $1000 in gift cards and I need to use them to pay my credit card bill. Obviously she hadn't gotten the gift cards for face value, because otherwise, why wouldn't you just use that $1000 to pay your bill directly, rather than buy gift cards first. The manager just said he couldn't do anything, and that she had to call corporate. I don't know what the outcome was, but she was on the phone for an eternity point also, didn't happen to me, but a coworker had a customer threaten to call the police, because her Coles cash was taken away, when she returned something, to report us stealing money from her. It's a faking coupon. More an interaction than a complaint point worked in an independent music shop as a teenager back in the 90s. We sold CDs, vinyl, etc. It was my first ever job and the owner had warned me about tricky customers, including the type that don't even know what they want. I didn't believe him at first. A few weeks in, I had a customer come up to the desk and tell me he's looking for this song. Before I can say anything, he starts what I assume he would call singing at me. I'm neither a singer nor a musician, but what I heard was a hideous tone deaf string of bum notes that, unsurprisingly, I didn't recognize point. So I asked a few questions. He couldn't tell me the name of the artist, the title of the song, the genre of music, whether it was an instrumental or not, any of the words from the song or even where he heard it. He repeated his performance for me a couple of times, clearly getting angrier by the second. I gave up and told him I didn't know what he was looking for. This was his cue to start yelling, it's your job to know this. How can you not know this? When I go to the pizza place and ask for a pizza, they give me a faking pizza. What's wrong with you, my boss overheard this from his office upstairs and came down to the shop floor. I was just standing there, a kid of 16, not knowing how to respond. The customer has started banging his fists on the desk, giving an even more irate and furious interpretation of his song, as if that will somehow jog my memory. My boss, perfectly calm, interjects. Hey, mate, when you order toppings on your pizza, do you do shitty impersonations of what you want? Do you dance your choice of thin or deep pan crust? If you can't tell us what you're looking for, we can't help you. Now stop wasting the boy's time and piss off. I didn't get to take this call, but I really wish I had. Strap in, it's a crazy one point back in 2017 I worked in a call center for a home department shop, you know kitchenware, furniture, garden tools, and we had taken on some temporary staff to help with the festive period. I was sitting next to one, I was answering emails she was on the phone, when the call came point our store and ads on TV, and in the ad there was a knife featured. This woman rang up insisting we were promoting knife crime and supporting gang culture by advertising a knife. 
She was going crazy, and I could hear my colleague, who was still new and not worn down by call center life, trying to reassure her that our middle class customer base were not likely to be involved in gangs, that you had to be 18 to buy knives, and that we check ID on every single order this literally went on for about 10 minutes before the manager was able to intervene. My colleague, bless her, was trying to explain our policy on selling knives online. Legally we have to either check the electoral register or the customer sends us an email with photo ID. It's UK law. And of course in store. No ID. No sale. Well this woman was on a mission. To end our store selling knives and to save the children of the UK. And make it impossible for anyone to cook properly. She demanded we pull the ad. Stop selling the knives and other stuff that I missed because I was too busy holding back hysterical laughter. To add to it, when the manager took over the call, I opened a tab and did a Google image search for that Helen Lava Joy won't someone please think of the children meme from The Simpsons and showed it to my colleague. Point eventually the call ended, the customer's crusade was finished, and the story passed around the office. Best bit, she never ordered anything from our company, never had. She just called up and exploded. I work in a public library point late fees are 25 cents per day per item with a maximum of $10 or the cost of the item, again, per item, whichever is lower. So if you had two books out a month past the due date, and one book was $20 and the other is $4.99 your total fines would be $14.99 point I can't tell you how many people have yelled at me, because they owed 25 cents for being a day late point the worst though was this one lady. She's always trouble to begin with. We're a county library with over 30 branches, so if one branch doesn't have the item you want, but another does, you can put it on hold and have it transferred. She used to demand that we drop everything and go through the newly arrived shipment to see if her hold was in yet, then get angry when we'd say it would take at least an hour if not more. Everything was a demand with her. Well, we were closed for a holiday and it just so happened she had a book that had been due the day before the holiday. Rule is, if you can get the book into the book drop, which is open 24 over 7, one of which you can just drive up to, even one minute before opening, the items will be checked in, as if returned the last day we are open. She comes in with it during the afternoon and utterly flips on me, because she's two days late, and owes 50 cents. She insisted that, because we were closed for one day it should only be 25 cents. Ranted and raved and yelled and all I did was stand there and finally say, ma'am, that's why we have a book drop. She grumbled but paid her 50 cents what she and many of the people who yell at me over a quarter don't get. With lower fines like that, I have the authority to waive them. And honestly, if someone's polite and kind to me, and it's only 25 cents, I often will without even telling them they owe money course right now we are not charging any fines due to covered as we are quarantining items for 4 days before checking them in. Just damaged and lost items. And despite that being announced repeatedly, I and my coworkers have been yelled at a number of times by patrons who want us to go through quarantine, find their single book, and check it in right now so they don't get charged late fees. This doesn't really fit here, but anyway, I've never worked retail or customer service, except by accident. Long ago I worked night shifts, railroad locomotive hostler, slept daylight, my landline phone was one digit off of Atlas Moving Company. Pre-cell phone era point I'd always answer the landline, because could be called into work. Off shift point the first few woke me up calls for the moving company I'd say no this is 1235, Atlas Moving is 1234 inches bunch of times. Got tired of that, so I started pretending to really be Atlas moving when called. Yes, we can package and move your entire three bedroom house contents to Toronto. Hang on, I have to guide this truck backing up. Go to fridge, open it, man, open living room drapes, look out. Sorry about that sir, I'm answering phones and working the loading dock today. Jenna died, now where were we, if... The customer expressed some sympathy for Janet slash or coworkers, I'd tell them they have the wrong number. 
Otherwise I'd quote them $400 per mile per room point, if it was inquiring about storage, my rate was $200 per square foot per hour clumsy dialing customer always was whoa that's crazy high I'd go into a spiel about how careful we are, use Himalayan tissue layers to pack everything, and we only wore soft velvet and silk. Cover also nothing got scratched. Storage was so high, because it was a deep underground vault, with armed guards, at work at night I'd come up with other reasons, why my rates are so high. Almost started looking forward to the wrong number daylight moving company calls they faded out after a while. I don't know if this fits into customer service, but, a few years back, I took a job as assistant manager at a resort and conference center, which often left me spread thin, and wearing many hats. It had an outdoor pool, outdoor sauna, golf course, off-road park, hiking and ski trails, shooting range, kayaks, two restaurants, three meeting halls, about a square mile of property. Point one of the big draws was that on top of the two wings of hotel-style rooms, the resort featured many different sizes and types of cabins that could be rented by the day or week. However, Several years ago, it seems the previous resort owners had offered to allow natives of the island to purchase and own some of these cabins, and the new owners were still in the process of buying them all back as it became financially feasible point for those of you unaware of how things work when a private party owns a piece of resort property, it boils down to this, the resort is responsible for cleaning, maintenance, repair, winterizing, scheduling rentals, but the private owners get final say in everything, including Dacre. So, there I was, sitting at the front desk, running nightly audit reports, long after maintenance and housekeeping had gone home for the day, and a man comes up to the front desk with a look of defeat on his face, ma'am. My wife sent me up here to ask if we could get different bowls. Different bowls? The bowls in our cabin are barely large enough for cereal, I'm... Sorry sir, but we don't have bowls. The dishes in the cabins are whatever the owners decided to put in there. Could you get bowls from a different cabin? We're not legally allowed to do that. My wife isn't going to be happy if I don't get bigger bowls. Could you try the store in town? No. Joke. I got an angry phone call an hour later. I used to work for a buffet chain restaurant. Since it was a buffet, the customer paid before they sat down to eat. I get this group of two seniors and two adults. Seniors had a slightly cheaper meal. I ring it up as having all four on the ticket the first time, and one of the adults tells me it was wrong, that it was supposed to be one senior and one adult on one ticket, the other senior and other adult on the other ticket. He didn't tell me that beforehand but sure, whatever, I restart the transaction. They hadn't paid yet. One senior and one adult on one ticket, one senior and one adult on the other. We get through the transaction, they pay, they go sit down. A few minutes later, the same guy who corrected me before comes up, visibly annoyed, says I got the ticket wrong. Obviously I'm confused, figure he messed up before, and wanted the seniors on one ticket and adults on the other. I get the manager's permission to refund them. We weren't allowed to issue a refund without the manager's permission. Refund him. Get the two seniors on one ticket and two adults on the other. I read the tickets aloud to him. Before I finalize the transaction. He agrees they are right. I wrap it up. He goes on his way. And I figure that's finally the end of it. And then he comes back up again. Dude is red in the face. Voice raised. Calling me incompetent and all that jazz. I decided that at $9 an hour I wasn't getting paid enough to deal with a customer calling me an idiot, so I get the manager to come up to the register and check the guy out for me. Guy immediately relaxes. When my manager comes up, I retreat because I didn't feel like hearing him complain about me and wait. A few minutes later I find my manager again and ask what the problem was. He said I did it right the first time, one adult and one senior per ticket, and that the guy was just an idiot probably trying to get a free meal, or whatever tldr customer got angry at me for ringing them up correctly. 17 years ago, when I was pregnant with my son, I was working as the cashier at a fast food place in the local mall's food court, and it was maybe 10 days or so before Christmas. I was 6 mo's pregnant and utterly exhausted because my soon-to-be son acted if he were training for the Olympics gymnastics team in my belly while also using my bladder for a squeezy toy. 
I was also, because my boss was a dick, working 40 plus hours a week on my feet with no accommodations for the fact that I was pregnant, because my boss was a dick. Anyway, here we are, about 10 days before Christmas and I'm exhausted and totally over anything even remotely cheery and Christmassy at that point. point one of the managers of the Frau Frau women's clothing boutiques in the mall comes up to my station and orders, I don't know, whatever. I'm trying hard to be cheerful, but it's difficult, because I'm so exhausted. Point her order comes out, I hand it to her and she leaves. About 10 minutes later, the on-duty shift manager, thank god it was a Friday and the store owner slash GM wasn't there, because he was in temple or services, or whatever Muslims call going to worship, because he world read me the riot act, and probably fired me, calls me back into the office. He says that, so and so from such and such store had just gotten, whatever. I was like, yeah ran? She complained because I didn't have enough Christmas cheer. I was like, for real? Because I'm exhausted. I'm beyond exhausted. Even my exhaustion has exhaustion at this point. The shift manager said yeah, yeah he got it, whatever. I had a choice, I could take a 15 minute break to go compose myself, whatever the fact that was supposed to mean, or I could just go home. I grabbed my purse, clocked out and quite happily took miles downstairs to the Godiva and bought two peppermint truffles. I walked over to the Starbucks kiosk and bought a small hot chocolate and I sat my fat ass down on a nearby couch to enjoy my treat before going home to put my feet up and take a damn nap. Had a woman chat at me for her using a credit card contactless, it's a self-service machine she was using, due to covered only one was allowed on. So anyway as I was near the self-service machine, I said I will help you with your items, so I scanned them all for her, asked if she would like any offers and a bag, she said yes to the bag, and it charged her 10 pence for the bag, kinda heard a grumble or a mumble, I then asked how she would be paying. She got her card out, so I clicked card payment, I then asked, will it be contactless or chip and pin, she said yes, then blankly stared at me, I said if you are using contactless payment, it's just up the top of the card machine, and it will indicate that the payment has went through via a series of long beeps. She used contactless then said oh no I didn't want to do contactless and now my card is ruined. I printed off a receipt for her to show her that she would only be getting charged what was on the screen. Nope she was adamant that it was gonna charge her more cause of the contactless payment option. She said she will need to get a new card and she worked in the bank and all this stuff also complained that I activated her contactless payment option. Now here in the UK, when you first get a card and put it into a cash machine or chip and pin and use chip and pin, then your card is activated for contactless. I explained that to her, wasn't happy. My supervisor explained that to her, she seen it all go down. Lucky for me, she was walking by and saw it all happen. Nope wasn't happy at that and complained to my manager. When my manager explained it to her, she finally listened. I work two years front desk on a high-end hotel, so I can tell a lot of stories, but this one happened during my internship prior to that point it is Valentine's Day, the hotel has an offer on their website for a romantic evening, basically room outfitted with a bottle of champagne, rose petals on the bed, chocolate and a voucher for diner served in the room with all the chic flair, server coming with white glove, belled plates and so on. This offer was expensive. Quite so, but with reason, we were all drilled to offer full romance. Guest comes, a bookings with his girlfriend, the man is quite in a hurry, he slips once or twice in his check in how much he looks forward to a romantic night with her as it was their anniversary as well. We of course congratulate them and give them a free upgrade to an executive room instead of the standard he booked point guest comes back not 5 minutes later, yelling at the top of his lung how we ruined his weekend and we are crooks. He comes to me and start schooling me on how the first impression is the most important thing, and that his room was only standard, i.e., no rose, no champagne. Intrigued, I check the booking, dreading I made a mistake, my internship director was very strict and the success of my year depended on his note, I double check the booking, standard booking, standard room, not the special offer. So I kindly explained to the guest that I actually gave him an upgraded room so he was better off than what was booked. He starts yelling at me how I'm wrong, that the booking was special. 
I double check with him and explain that I can match the element of the package and have them brought to the room. Almost matching the difference in price in between standard and package point he was still not satisfied and said that he indeed booked the special and that we are trying to screw him out of his booking. Intrigued I open the website to check how he booked. He then point to the standard room below the Valentine Day offer. I then confirmed that it is indeed the standard booking point and his answer almost made me burst out of laughter. Yeah of course I took the cheapest, doesn't mean you can treat me differently than people with more money. TLDR, guest book the cheapest option and expect full stop king like service he wouldn't pay extra for. I worked in a computer game shop here in the UK way back when the Wii came out. We I fit, if you remember, was notoriously difficult to get a copy of, and we had to turn away a lot of disappointed people in the run up to Christmas a guy comes in, and asks for a copy. I apologize to him, and say we sold out, and best I can do I suggest he checks with our other store on the other side of the shopping center, but not to get his hopes up. He says okay and leaves. Half an hour later, while I'm serving an endless queue of customers, run up to Christmas, I hear a voice shout you faking fat court, you faking lead to me. It's the man, he's back and he's screaming at me in the middle of the shop. I ask him to please stop shouting and swearing, and asked what the problem was. You said they didn't have any in your other shop and they did. I bought the last one you faking as. And he waves the bag at me. Well first, I didn't say they were sold out. I said they were likely to have, and suggested you check. Second, you got one so what's the problem, my problem is you, you lying piece of shit, well I'm very sorry, but you got what you wanted so please leave what I want, is compensation for you wasting my time. I want a free win I, that's not going to happen then I want to kick the shit out of you get out, before I call the police you wouldn't dare, you fat shit I dared, and he was escorted out, still shouting and I had to get a police escort to the bus stop. All because he managed to buy a game I said he would be lucky to find. I was a manager at a clothing store, and as clothing folk may know many styles are recycled throughout the years. I point e, we might bring back a similar style dress from 2015, and redo it with a different fabric or a tweak design. You can only design so many different kinds of dresses anyway. A customer comes to check out and tries to buy one of these newer dresses from our recent collection. She's surprised and upset that it's full price because I just saw the same dress in a different color for less than half of this. I said oh sometimes different colors are marked down to different prices depending on how they're selling, but I'd be happy to look at the dress you saw, like if it was misplaced or accidentally marked on promotion, the dress she grabbed was buried in the sales section, was indeed about one quarter of the price, but it was indeed from over four years ago, most likely a customer. Return that kept weeding its way back into stores. Showed her the date printed on the label, and explained that they look similar. But they are just different dresses, different school numbers, different fabrics. It was just a totally different item and that's why it had a totally different price point. I honestly would have worked out some kind of deal for her because that phenomenon frustrates me even as an employee and I had the authority to, but she, who happened to be black, immediately starts shouting for my store manager, claiming I was racist. My store manager attempts to explain the same thing to her, and she keeps shouting that we are being racist, and we are only giving her a higher price because she's black, as if we make the prices that show up on screen, and also over half our staff is non-white. My manager tried many times to offer a discount and the woman wanted nothing to do with it except for an explanation as to why we tried to charge her more, tapping the dress on the counter all entitled like, and the number for corporate. Worked for an ice as a lead tech. Woman from a church calls in. She wants a static ipe. We charge $10 to issue one, and $10 to have it changed. She got her ipe info emailed to her, and hung up. She calls back in within minutes fuming. Apparently her static ipe had 3 6 in it, and she couldn't have that. The agent said for $10, I can change it again, but it's random, and I can't guarantee it won't have 3 6 in it. They accept. Sure enough. 3 6 again. Woman calls back, screaming at the next poor agent, and refused to hang up until she got an ipe that didn't have 3 6 in it point by the time she got to me, she tried 15 times 
to get an IPE that didn't have three six in it. She demanded a refund and for someone to work on getting her one that didn't have them. I told her I'll try as often as you want, but you'll be charged $10 each time for them. After roughly 10 to 15 more, we finally got one that didn't have them. She racked up about $500 in night switching charges. She had called in repeatedly that day and spoken to many people. She demanded I refund them or post a credit to her account. I refused because at the beginning of the call she said, fine, when I told her about the charges. She demanded to speak to my supervisor, and I said, funny thing. I'm actually my own supervisor. I created this team, and I'm the manager of it. She then demanded to speak to the person who signs your paycheck. I'm like ma'am, the accounting lady isn't going to be helpful at all in this issue. She doesn't know a thing about tech. She then wanted my CEO's email. So I gave it to her those emails come straight to me, as he doesn't have time to read those emails. I called her back. She screamed, hung up, and I never heard from her again point all the same. I ended up noting her account that if she calls in about the IPE or wanting credit slash refunds to transfer to me, she ended up paying the bill and never calling in again for the next 5 years she had service. So I don't work in this job anymore, but my god it was a frustrating job basically I dealt with customer accounts and this gentleman calls up. Let's call him Mr. Jenkins. Mr. Jenkins is 3 weeks late with his direct debit and is upset that I could not create a new day just for him and that I would not be available to take a payment on Christmas Day. Convo goes like this me. Hi you're through to generic company account desk. Potential car speaking. Mr. Jenkins, I'm shocked and outraged that my payment has not been taken me, though let me have a look for you. What's your name and address Mr. J. Jenkins, 123 Smith Avenue me. Sorry I need your full name Mr. J. A Jenkins me, your full name point eventually he gives me his name and I explain his direct debit failed. He thinks I'm saying he doesn't have money and he does. He is a lawyer. Okay. I explain for whatever reason the payment failed. It then goes like Mr. J, well because you've charged me a few, I can't afford my kids presents, so tomorrow I'll be telling them it's your fault point me, okay well I'm sorry about that, but I have to apply it, if you'd like I can change your payment date to a more suitable day for you to avoid this happening again point Mr. J, fine, you heartless corporate drone, I want it on the 30th point me, okay so your next payment is 30th Jan Mr. J, and then the same in February? me, well it'll be the, the 1st of March due to there not being a 30 THMRJ, that is not what I asked for, I want your manager, you're being very unhelpful point me, I'm sorry but there's not much I can do there, I can see, if there's someone available Mr. J, if I have it the 25th will it come out on the 25th of J, F, ETC point ETC, December, Will it go through on Christmas day me? It'll default to the nearest working day point Mr. J does not like this and kicks off. Yeah right don't miss that. I worked for an urgent care clinic in California. Important because Californians have a false sense of entitlement. When the H1N1 hit and everyone went bonkers for the shot once it was available. Our dumbass boss casted its availability over the radio without telling us employees. So I show up for work one half an hour early, before we even open. I could not find a place to park. I had to push through people, to get into the office with people attempting to walk in behind me. It is a small clinic with 5 patient rooms, and 1 doctor per day. There were at least 50 people outside in hysterics, and growing by the minute point a Karen was adamant, that she needed to come in, and get her shot, before we even opened. I had no idea what she was talking about and told her this was the employee in trance and she had to wait until we opened. Then she told me to remember her so that when I do open the doors, she would be first in line as if we had bonded over her pushiness. I told her first come first serve and close the door. It was a one way mirror door and the look on her face made my day or at least the one half hour before I had to unlock the door, so the boss doesn't usually show up until 45 minutes after we open, but I had to call her and ask what the fuck was going on, where was the paperwork for the immunizations, ECT. She didn't answer, of course. At the time, all I knew through the medical community is that it is only available to people with compromised immune systems. 
I have to unlock the door and literally get it thrown at me, like it's faking Black Friday for starving the Martians. I make it back to my desk. Boss calls, we have to screen for people with compromised immune systems. Everyone is lying on their reason for needing the shot. I'll pull their chart, and it will say nothing about what they are claiming. AIDS, cancer, ECT, realty, what's, then Karen. I'll give you a description, a 40 ish year old Lorraine from Mad TV mixed with Honey Boo Boo's mom. Real classy. What was her condition you ask? Acid reflux. I asked her again what condition do you have that compromises your immune system? She again replies acid reflux. She was the healthiest heifer in the bunch. I asked her if she had any other diagnosis, and she said no. I then told her ma'am, acid reflux does not compromise your immune system, you will not be receiving a vaccine. She got hysterical, said she knew the owner, said she'd have my job, ECT. I told her she can wait and talk to the boss when she gets a minute. Karen asks when I think that will be. I tell her I don't know cause she isn't even here yet. Yay, the boss slash owner is also the doctor, so we literally had an urgent care clinic open for emergencies and the boss would show up whenever she recovered from her hangover enough to drive point Karen continued with her aunt, I ignored her, and worked with the slightly more reasonable patients. She keeps going on about how Dr. Worthless is going to fire me, how she's going to sue me, ECT point doctor. Worthless shows up, and Karen instantly jumps down her throat trying to convince her that I'm the devil, and I was talking shit about Dr. Worthless for being late. I had had enough. I put up 10 shards, enough to keep the medical assistants occupied for a while, and went to talk with Dr. Worthless and Karen Zilla. I opened my mouth to talk, and Dr. Worthless cuts me off, and tells me that Karen is getting a shot. We only had like 30 vaccines. I had to turn away about 75 people, actually sick people. But Karen Zilla got her faking shot. Later I asked Dr. Worthless who she was and why she was so important. Cause Dr. Worthless is notorious for throwing employees under the bus to appease her friends. Karen Zilla threatened her with a Yelp review. She wasn't ever a patient, she didn't even live in our county. She was a faking tourist. I've managed for many gyms over the years and I constantly get these, but my personal favorite was the time a guy came after we closed on the 4th of July. I had stayed late to get some projects done that I couldn't do with people in the building. So I'm locking up a whole 3 hours after we closed. A member walks up to me calmly and asked if we were closed. I'm holding the keys and physically locking the doors. So I just say, yeah we closed early for the holiday it doesn't say that on your website. Sir, I know for a fact that it is. He starts getting irate and yelling at me that I'm wrong, and he proceeds to pull out his phone and show business hours on Google, which, if you're familiar, there's a disclaimer that says hours made for due to holiday. I explain how that is not our website and that this info has been posted other places he got, so upset that he yelled and berated me as I walked two blocks to the subway. I kept asking him what he would like me to do for him because honestly I jaff. Next day he called corporate and all my bosses to complain. My bosses called me and said he wants a refund for the day we were closed. When I saw him, I smiled and handed him his $1.38 point now karma takes over. Months after I leave the company I get a call from a former employee and they regaled me with a story about how he was jumped at the corner around the gym. Came in bloodied and bruised. I can only imagine how he found himself in that one, but it was well deserved fuck you, guy. I'm a server at a smallish locally owned restaurant. Once during a shift, I walked into the bathroom during a brief moment where none of the tables I was serving needed anything. A middle aged woman standing at the sinks immediately turns to me before I can even open a stall door. The interaction went something like this. She gestured irately at the soap dispensers, which are all motion activated. All of your dispensers are empty. None of them work. Right away, I'm kind of pissed. This woman isn't even allowing me 2 minutes out of my shift to use the bathroom. She didn't even say something like, Excuse me, I think your soap dispensers are empty. Could you help me? Nope. Just straight to complaining point I said something like, Oh, are they? Let me check. Walked past her and put my hand against the soap dispenser. What do you know? The soap miraculously dispenses. 
I turn to her, one hand filled with soap, and don't even have moment to say anything before she starts up again. Well, when I tried all of them, none of them worked for me. The dispensers aren't sensitive enough. She then proceeded to show me how she had been attempting to get soap. Instead of putting her hand under the obvious nozzle on the front of the dispenser, she was trying to get soap from the bottom, despite the dispensers being clearly labeled. Whatever, I think. She can wash her hands now. I turn to wipe the soap off my hand, so I can do my business, when she starts complaining again, about something else entirely out of my control. The faucets don't work either. I've been standing here, and trying to get the water, to come out for at least 5 minutes, again, I turn back to the sinks, which are also, you guessed it, motion activated, and wave my hand under one. And again, the sinks appear to be fully functional after all, you have to put your hand directly under it, I tell her, wishing she would just leave me alone. It's motion activated, like the soap dispensers. You should change it. It's very inefficient. She continues to stand there and beach at me, instead of, you know, actually washing her hands, now that I've shown her a step by step process of how our bathroom facilities work point at this point, I really just want to pee and get back to my tables in a timely manner. Maybe a table needs something, and I'm in the bathroom, showing a grown as woman how to wash her hands. This woman's prolonged complaining could actually affect my tips. Instead of continuing to stand there and maybe even attempt to explain that I have zero control over the sensitivity of the sinks or soap dispensers, I just smile and say, thanks for bringing it to my attention. I'll let my manager know, the woman isn't very happy with this outcome either, but I make it pretty clear that I've had enough of this interaction. I turn around and walk into a stall, even as she continues to grumble about how much I need to inform a manager right away. The kicker is that, apparently, my manager was looking for me while this situation was taking place. My manager then proceeded to scold me later in the evening for taking too much time in the bathroom while I was in the process of clocking out for the night. I had to explain to her that there was a customer in the bathroom that couldn't figure out how to use the soap dispensers or sinks, and I had to show her. Thankfully, my manager believed me and rolled her eyes with me over the banality of the things customers complain about. But really, what did that woman think complaining so rudely to me would accomplish? Like I said, I have absolutely no control over anything in the bathrooms. If it was bothering her enough to complain to me for so long that my manager noticed my absence, you'd think she'd take her complaints straight to my manager. Plus, she wasn't even a customer of mine, which meant that I really didn't have any obligation to help her. I cold just told her that, yes, they do in fact work, said I was busy and gone about my business. The fact that I took the time to walk her through it and it got me in trouble later is honestly infuriating. Display models. It's only happened twice, so far. Vertical bar, but on both occasions it just baffled the fuck out of me. First guy was already kind of acting like a psycho, but then he got onto having TVs on display, was false advertising, because we didn't have many in stock on that particular day, it was after a large sale and whatnot, so faking duh there's not many left. I tried to tell him it was obviously, so people could get a good look at the things, before they buy them. Needless to say he didn't quite grasp it. He then demanded I look up, if another store had them in, by using the cash register. It was really hard not to laugh while explaining, sir, that is not a computer. It doesn't even look like one. It has no screen or anything like that. He refused to believe me, demanded to speak to a manager, and then left. Second time was yesterday, and follows in the same vein, of why have a display model out, if you're not selling the product. Like, dude, we aren't going to haul every display down when an item is out of stock for a few days. I even pointed out the little card in front of the laptop that clearly said sorry this item is out of stock. Clearly this means it is wiped from the face of the earth and the store is lying to me. Don't get me started on the amount of times people want to buy a display and don't understand that 9 times out of 10 it's not even functional. Somebody took one up to cash before, not too long ago. I wonder about people most days. Not necessarily customer service, but I work as a cashier and get complaints as well. There was a dude that complained about this huge box with different drawers in it. 
On every level there were different prices listed, along with the price on every item. Some older dude thought it was absolutely ridiculous that there were different priced items in one drawer, even though both prices were listed on the drawer and on the product. He said I should tell the manager to change it. I was 15 years old. During this pandemic people have complained about the rule to take a basket or cart with them into the store. I did as had people yelling at me to shut up, that it's bullshit, or that I should leave them alone and not enforce the ridiculous rules of the store. I'm 17. People around the age of 50 or even 60 had been yelling at me. Point another customer complained to me that I couldn't figure out 20% of a price within 5 seconds. Some lady complained that I put her package on the cart instead of in the mailbox, where it is not supposed to go. But she thought she knew better and said that I have to do things right because her package had not been delivered yet. I gave her a number for customer service and told her there was nothing I could do point at the time. Masks were not obligated. It was a recommendation. I didn't wear one because the company said I didn't have to. A customer thought it was ridiculous we forced him to wear one. We didn't. I told him he had to grab a basket. He didn't want to. Fine. Leave three minutes later he came back irritated with a basket, grabbed his items, and left his basket. Told the cashier to tell him to take the basket back with him next time, and he got angry point I got more stories, but too much to talk about right now. As a current nurse and former waitress, I have a lot of these couple comes into my completely empty restaurant around lunchtime. Another table had literally walked out the door as they were walking in, so that table was still dirty, as I was the only person working, besides the cook. I greet the new couple, and tell them to pick whatever table they want. They choose the only faking dirty table, and then beach that it's dirty, watch me clean it, and proceed to bark orders at me in the process. They didn't even tip well. Wife of a patient wants a recliner chair. We don't have any available, they are being used by other patients. But I eventually go out of my way and find her one. It's not the kind she likes. My charge nurse manages to find the one she likes, and I bring it it, and wipe it down with the hospital wipes, and she complains that now she can't use it, because the disinfectant from the wipes hurts her skin or something lady complains her grilled chicken doesn't have grill lines on it. We had a flat top grill. Lady is upset that our small, neighborhood Italian restaurant doesn't have any gluten free options lady insists that she needs Exodrin for her headache at 1am. Our pharmacy does not have brand name OTC drugs like that. I explain that we don't have that, but that Exodrin is really just acetaminophen, aspirin and caffeine, so I can give her acetaminophen now and see if I can get orders for aspirin and she's not okay with that at all and literally screams at me something about that, why it's called back quote the headache medicine. A customer was buying a $240 instrument. I told them that if they spent $250 they'd get 20% off their purchase and suggested getting a $12 clip-on tuna we sold. They told me no and that they know how these backquote tricks work to get people to spend more money. I told them that if they bought the tuna they'd only be paying $200 instead of $240 without the tuna. They complained to my manager that I was trying to backquote bamboozle and condom. You just can't win with some people. Edit. Oh also I had one woman who would come in to buy sheet music all the time and she was always super rude and condescending because I didn't have the authority to print sheet music that wasn't in stock but my manager did. She was a music teacher and she had a deal with the store somehow that she would get things cheaper than the bare minimum price. One time she came in looking for the sheet music for some songs from the Spongebob musical which at the time had just come out. I couldn't find it in our system, and I then discovered that, because the show was still in its initial run, music wasn't published for it, and it wasn't available anywhere. She proceeded to ram me out for 45 minutes, because I couldn't find the sheet music for the faking Spongebob musical, which she would only be paying 10 cents for, because of her insane discount, because it literally didn't exist. I explained that to her multiple times, but she still insisted I could do it, but just didn't want to. She complained to my manager, saying I was lazy, and he should fire me of course he knew she was just a massive Karen, he'd hide in the back of the store, whenever she came in just to avoid her, and make us say he wasn't there, or he was on a call with corporate, so it was all good. 
I work at Sonic. Everyone knows that. If you go to a store to order, a car hopper will bring out your food and you'd pay, then you have the choice to drive off and eat at home, or while driving, or just stay in the store and eat. Everything is practically to go. Sonic doesn't have a dine-in, we have outdoor tables, but those are closed off due to COVID, so your only option is to go through the drive through or sit and order at a stall. I'm a car hopper there, and I make drinks, ice cream, do headset, take out food, stock items, and clean. Basically everything but manage and cook. Headset beeps, I answer and say a greeting. It's an older lady that answers, and says she already ordered. I ask her what she needed point she says I wanted to make sure it was to go, I was confused. Asked her to repeat herself, and elaborate because I've never came across someone who has asked slash said that at Sonic. You can kinda guess what happens from there. I basically just explained to her that all the food is already bagged, and once the car hopper gives it to her, she is free to leave. She doesn't have to stay in the stall point she responds with a no okay, just making sure, I don't know, if she's just never been to a Sonic or thought she was obligated to stay in the stall, and eat the food in her car, until she was finished point edit, typus.